Hi, Gordon back, and this time, um, this is number two of a series of videos about the Bible um, and about the crabness of the Bible, really, when you look at it through eyes, fresh eyes, okay? Not through the eyes of some scholarly person who explains away, ah, but what that means is bollocks. We're looking at the story in its basic form, okay? So, God's all-seeing, all-knowing, and all-powerful. Okay, now, if you think of the story of, of Adam and Eve, um, Adam and Eve had the job of um, naming all the animals and being fruitful, okay? That means shagging a plenty um, and filling the earth. So, every afternoon, I'm sure this is the story, if I remember it rightly, God would pop down to the garden and have a bit of an, a bit of a natter with Adam and Eve, just to check. You know, you probably you can imagine how it goes. Hello, good afternoon. That's God. Um, uh, good afternoon, God. And uh, he would be saying things because he, he was obviously he was in need of a bit of feedback. And the first two people there, you go, um, you know, does does these do these sandals go with this robe? You know, do you think my beard's too long? Should I, should I trim it a little bit? What about the hair? Um, things like that. Anyway. God would go down and have a bit of a chat with them. And that was because, and I remember studying this with the, the witnesses, that was because God could see perfection because Adam and Eve were perfect. Imagine the bodies they had, perfect. And God could look at them. You know, well, who wouldn't? But God or the angels were quite interested as well. But, but God could look at Adam and Eve and he would go down and have a chat with them, okay? One afternoon, not long after it all started. Oh, we used to say as well, uh, don't eat of the tree of good and bad, because the day that you eat that, you'll die. Okay, slight exaggeration, but the very day you'll die. You should have said, the very day that you do that, you'll begin to die across, across a period of time. Um, anyway, and, and then you would say that, and then you would say, and the tree of life, can you just, just put that to one side, put it out of your mind, because I don't know what's going on there yet. I'm not quite sure what's, just leave that okay um, anyway one afternoon he came down to have a chat his usual chat Adam and Eve nowhere to be seen okay and it wasn't until later well what had happened Adam and Eve had eaten of the fruit and in that instant they had become like God and in that moment, they become like God. And as soon as they became like God, they looked down at themselves and noticed they were naked. And noticed that it was bad. They looked down at, oh, bloody hell, I'm naked. That's awful. That was because they were now like God. What does that prove? This is a, just a little sidebar. What does it prove? It proves that it is bad to be naked. Okay? which makes all these naturists, well, it just shows that they're going against God's wishes and, and it's bad to wander around naked. And I would tend to agree with that, having seen some naturist scenes, you know, of, of big fat wobbly people going along the beach with an ice cream, okay? And other cornets. So, anyway, so um, the, what did they do? They ran into the bushes, Eve in search of three generous, uh, fig leaves and Adam just one, albeit a long one, um, because he was perfect, wasn't he? Um, so, God came down for a chat, nowhere to be seen. Came back later when they emerged, when they emerged from the bushes, and this is what he said to them, okay? He said, I notice you've got clothes on, you're ashamed of your nakedness. You haven't eaten of the tree, have you? Okay, now, am I being naive here? Or, shouldn't have God known that already? Instead of having to ask that question, shouldn't he have already known that? Because, after all, he is omniscient. And he's all present. He should have been there when they were doing it. And this thing about coming down and, and they weren't there, they were hiding in the bushes. When I was a kid, we would play hide and seek and I would hide in the bushes and my friends could find me. And they weren't even God. And they didn't have the gift of um, all-seeing power. 
So what was going on with God? I mean, did he have cataracts that day, or had he left his glasses, his reading glasses or something, um, up in his wallet in where he lived? What was going on? How did he not know? Uh, let's go further back. How did he not know, before he created everything, that everything was going to go bad? How did he not know that? He should have known it. God can see into the future. God is not bound by time. He's boundless, supposedly. So how is it that he didn't know? It doesn't make sense, does it? And this is what I'm thinking. This story is a load of bollocks. Um, it sounds like it might have been written by men. However, let's see as we go on. Um, so, what happened? Now, this is a god, okay? Yahweh. Yahweh, well, it's actually Yahweh, but well, it's got no vowels. It's like, Yuh, really. I mean, they just say Yahweh because it's too difficult to say Yuh, okay? Um, but that was his name. And what happened? Well, after all of this happened, instead of taking responsibility for the fact that he had cocked up, okay, I mean, you can't deny the fact. God had built the earth, it went dramatically wrong immediately. Who's to blame? Ah, well, God, being godlike and all powerful, and loving, um, instantly blamed everybody. Okay? You know, the only person who actually had it right, the only person who had it right was Adam. Because when Adam was, was blaming everybody, now when God was blaming everyone, Adam said to God, well, you gave me the woman. Okay? And that is the only logical sentence in the whole of that shitty story that yes, yes, it was God's fault. It wasn't man's fault. They, they, they didn't have any frame of reference, Adam and Eve, they'd just been born. The only thing that they had in their heads were various animal names and probably various sexual positions. And that's it. They had no experience whatsoever. God, well, he was a, he was a man of experience. Obviously, not that much experience, because he did such a crap job of building it, didn't he? Now, if I was going to love a God unconditionally, I would want to see God-like qualities. Blaming, and um, what's the, the... I suppose it would be something like immaturity. You know, when you're immature, you don't accept your, your own actions. You don't take responsibility. When somebody really mature, they remember they're talking about Kennedy, the day that he accepted that it was his fault about the Cuban crisis. The day Kennedy said that, he matured. Well, God was obviously either a teenager or about three, probably three years old, because he just said, it wasn't me. It was you and you and uh, the devil as well. All right, Satan. Now, Satan played his part in it, okay? Now, Satan was an angel. He was obviously of a different level very intelligent he came down but what's the funny thing about all of this is that after God God was obviously on a roll in terms of blaming everyone blame Adam Adam you're gonna die uh, you're gonna have to toil you're gonna have to be a farmer okay that was his punishment you have to be a farmer uh, uh, which isn't that much of a punishment really is it be a farmer and I, I know lots of farmers that do very well for themselves particularly with the government subsidies um, Eve well, she didn't get off quite as lightly because uh, God is also extremely um, chauvinist. He's all of the ists. Any ist that you've got, you know, these ist words, God's that. Um, mostly, mostly a murderer, but there you are. Um, so Eve, what did he do? Well, he, he cursed Eve to suffer the pain of childbirth, uh, to suffer the menstrual cycle. It's called the curse, the, the Catholic curse church did a good job there didn't they um and and basically women have been downbeat ever since and the whole bible puts women down second class citizens the weaker vessel okay like a ship with a crack in it um so and then he blamed satan and he said oh you're you're not going to go back to heaven you're grounded 
literally grounded to the ground. But he wasn't finished then. What did he do? He then turned to the serpent. Okay. Now, forgive me if I'm being a little bit uh, pedantic here, but I've got a funny feeling that when Satan entered into the serpent through the, the, the nearest orifice, the most convenient one anyway, um, I don't think he had the permission of the serpent. I don't think he said, excuse me, serpent, I'm just going to enter into you. Uh, I'm going to speak through you, and but there'll be trouble. All right, it's going to cause trouble for the rest of the days of mankind. But is that all right? I don't think he did that. I think he probably just entered into the serpent. The serpent was kind of just sort of sliding along and then, whoa, you bugger, what's that? Um, literally, you bugger. And there appeared. Anyway, God blamed the serpent and he said, you and you will crawl on your belly all the days. Now, come on. That's not God-like behaviour, is it? That's not a, what you would expect of God. Because it wasn't the serpent's fault. Well, it wasn't any of their fault. But, I mean, really, the serpent had the least amount of involvement. He was he was he had a walk-in. It wasn't his choice. He was probably just daydreaming, thinking about tongues or something. But God blamed him as well. And, and he's been doing that ever since. Okay? He's been angry ever since the God of the Bible. If you're to believe that that is a real God, and if you're to believe that the Bible is actually anything that's linked in the slightest to God. So, in the next uh, video, I'm going to talk about a couple of incidences that are mentioned in the Bible where God, Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh is shown, he shows his real colours and we'll really find out what he is, because he's not a god, okay? Um, so, stay tuned. I'll see you in the next one. See you soon. Bye.